Hi, welcome to Croatia. This is the newly redesigned version of the setups I made for the Lancia Delta HF Integrale. Instead of just showing you a setup and the gameplay related to that setup, I will continue this series by explaining how and why I make those settings. Plus, this car has two settings that I didn't cover in the setup explained video, so it will make for the perfect example. Now let's kick things off with the tuning. First, let's gather the only three pieces of information we know so far about the track. Surface is asphalt, it has a medium high number of turns, and the race may be mostly uphill. How can I tell that right from the start? You may have noticed that the tracks are duplicated. At first, you go in one direction, and then you come back on the same track, but from the opposite direction. On this track, the starting elevation is lower than on the other one, meaning that the first one is uphill and the second will be downhill. For the first run on the alignment tab, I will apply my favorite toe configuration, which is optimized for better cornering, and slightly increase the camber values for the front and rear wheels to test the grip. Moving on to the differentials, I will increase the braking lock and add 50 preload to test the understeer effect that it generates during corner entries. Now, here are the two settings that I mentioned in the intro, viscous differential and torque bias. The viscous differential works kinda in the same way as a torque converter, and if you don't know how a torque converter works, well, it works similarly to a viscous differential. Just kidding. While a normal diff controls the left and right wheels on the same axle, the viscous diff controls the entire front and real axle. That's why it's also called a central diff. Why is it called viscous? Well, because the input shaft and the output shaft don't physically connect as the pinion and ring gear do in a normal differential. Here, the shafts have some sort of plates with fins, which as the input gear spins, will start to spin the fluid inside the casing, which will start to spin the plates on the other shaft. So that's why I compared it to the torque converter, because they have the same operating principles, but this one is mostly used as a replacement for the clutch on cars with automatic gearboxes. For example, when you want to exit a turn and you are back on the gas, if you have more torque sent to the real wheels, they will want to spin faster to push the car out of the corner. So a strong setting will want to prevent that. I recommend starting with a medium setting and adjust accordingly. On surfaces with less grip like dirt and snow, a stronger setting will help as all four wheels will fight against the slippery surfaces to push the car forward. While on asphalt, where the grip is sufficient, a medium or medium low setting will do the trick. Torque bias is much simpler to explain. The way this slider works, it allows you to send more torque either to the rear or to the front wheels. Send more power to the rear wheels and you will get a more rear wheel drive effect. So you can get better drive out the corners, but add too much power and you will be more likely to spin out because of too much oversteer if you're not cautious enough with the accelerator. On the other hand, by sending more power to the front wheels, the stability may be improved by giving you more understeer and lowering the likeliness of spinning out. But the cornering will become worse the higher you go with this setting. So I will stay more on the real wheel drive side. If I feel too much oversteer mostly on low grip situations, I will raise the bias more to the center, but never on the front wheel drive side. Put the slider at the center at 50%, go left to send more power to the rear, and go right to send more power to the front. The next thing to config are the dampers. This car only has slow bump adjustment, which is much simpler to set up, but it may not be as efficient at absorbing bumps and jumps compared to the newer cars with more sophisticated suspension systems. But to compensate, this car has a more sophisticated powertrain. Whatever, for now, I will stay relatively stiff with these settings because we are on asphalt and asphalt is usually smooth. I will add a few pips to the braking pressure and leave the braking bias alone for now to test for any lockups. I will raise the handbrake pressure to test the locking power it delivers and how the car rotates around the U-turns. And lower it down as we go if the wheels lock too hard and make the rear end rotate too early. In the gears tab, I will gradually lengthen all the gears 2-3 pips to the 2nd gear, 4-5 to the 3rd and so on, while on the 6th gear I will not go higher than 1 for now because I don't think there are long enough straights to reach the rev limiter. And lower the final drive just a little, last but not least, with the surface being asphalt, I will lower the ride height all the way down, leave the springs alone for now and stiffen the ARBs to reduce the amount of body roll. Now let's head to the track. Three. I didn't even finish the first race because I felt too much braking lock, so I came back to the service area and shifted the brake bias more to the rear. Four, 
left short, small cut, and six right to slight left of a crest, 70 left long, tightens two short, and six right, tightens one fifth. Way better this time, but I will still lower the braking pressure, so the locking will only happen under heavy braking. Next, on the differential tab, I will lower the preload as I feel a little more understeer on corner entries and shift some of the torque to the front wheels, because there is too much oversteer on corner exits. Three right short, 30, four left, 90, six left, 40. Power delivery feels better now, so I want to tick the suspensions a little because although the race is on asphalt, I can say it's a pretty bumpy track. For now, I will only raise the right height a few centimeters to allow for more suspension travel and soften the air be swampy, because I feel the car sliding on some corners and that may be due to the tendency of the inside tire to lift off the ground and shift too much weight on the outside tire, overloading it and making it lose grip. After a few more runs where I focus solely on the suspensions, I also soften the slow bump and the rebound, because as I said, it's a pretty bumpy track, so I want the wheels to be in contact with the road as much as possible. Now it's gearbox time. I've noticed that throughout the whole race, I shifted into 6 gear only once, so I will lower the ratios so I can take advantage of all the gears. This way, the torque potential on all 6 gears will be higher, leading to faster accelerations. And besides, we can't just ignore it, the engine and its RPMs are optimized to work with 6 gears, not just 5. As I'm starting to learn the track more and more, and go faster and faster, I notice some unwanted understeer when coasting and braking, which is caused by the braking lock being set too high, so lowering it is a must. Now, I want to lower the final drive to get better acceleration since the race is uphill and the force of gravity is also acting against the car. After another lap, I may increase the camber angle because as I said, there are not so many straights, so a higher camber angle will only be beneficial on tracks with many many turns. After more testing on the alignment, I had to lower just a little the camber value and tweak the toe angle as well. The only thing lacking is a little more acceleration, so I will lower the final drive again. I don't think I'ma go lower than this value anyway, because the gears are also kinda short, so putting the power down may start to become difficult. Not long after the last major adjustment, with only small tweaks here and there, this setup put me well into the 4th place, with just 3.5 seconds of difference between me and the 1st place. So it's safe to say that this setup performed quite well. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts in the comment section as well. See you on the track, bye bye!